Hey, shalom and welcome to the Rukama Kapash and Jimmy Slanan giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Chach Vadash. Want to give double honors unto the elders, the apostles of Jimmy, and shalom met there to the hopeful, let's preach the truth and all sincerity. Um, just wanted to do a video on this, man. This um, had this uh, saved from a brother's post a little while ago, right? Because you know, anyway, having those floods, right? <laughs> Can even bear a man's. But yeah, you had these, uh, these fools carrying out their idols, man. You know? It was, it was, you know, amusing. It's amusing, right? Because what the hell, what, what the hell's going on here? How, how, how is um, man saving their gods, <laughs> right? And as the caption says, uh, flood in India. Everybody is trying to save his own god. I thought it should be vice versa. Yeah, that you know, where are you, where were your gods at, man? Why, why didn't they stop the flood? You know, and they, you know, and then <laughs> they got you, man, carrying them out on 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 your back and shit, man. Yeah, it just shows the shows, man, that the, the the gods of the nations are nothing but idols, right? They have no power, okay? They, they are no gods, man, all right? So I'm just going to do a little uh, video on on this, right? So I'm just going to open up with the first Chronicles chapter 16, verse 26. It says, for all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord Yahweh made the heavens. There's only one power in existence you know one reigning power and that is the most high Yahweh. right he's the one that is responsible for all the creation right all these sub division gods that you you, you know people have made over over the years and these heathens have made over the years they're just wooden stone okay they don't exist they, they they have no presence, right? And they don't actually contribute to nothing, right? They, these are just you know nothing but devils, <laughs> and demons that these people are, are, are worshiping, right? But you know they're not the Most High, okay? They're, they're, these these guys are not what you know bring you know they don't bring forth the rain, they don't bring forth you know the the light. The crops, anything. These these idols don't do that. Okay, the most high is responsible for all of those things. Alright. So there's only one. This is Isaiah 45, verse 20. It says, Assemble yourselves and come draw near. Together, ye that are escaped of the nations, that they have no knowledge that set up, that set up the wood of their graven image, and pray unto a God that cannot save. You know, evidently, these gods can't save, man. They are, they are being saved. You know, these graven images right here. And then the basic question: What's the what's the point? What's the point of of Worshipping something that can't help you, man. That you've got to help it. Something that was created, you've got to help it. And, then, you know, there's a scripture that... I believe it's in the Apocrypha. You know, it's not one that I've got right now. But, um, you know, it basically says, you know, the man that made it was greater than the thing that he made. You know, the God that he supposedly made. And evidently that's the case, you know. These people have more life, more you know, they're actually living, right? More power than than the idols that they, they serve and worship. You know, it's, it's stupid, right? So tell them, tell ye and bring them near, yea, take let them take counsel together who have declared this from ancient time, who have told it from that time, have not I the Lord, and there is no God else beside me, a just God and a saviour, there is none else beside me. So look unto me and be and be ye saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. Okay, obviously the Lord's speaking to Israel right there, right? Well, I just want to read this um this book here, the book of Jeremiah, oh, the letter of Jeremiah, chapter one. Is there more chapters? No. Jeremiah, sorry, letter of Jeremiah. I'm gonna start from the full verse, right? It's quite a lengthy one, but you know. I came across it, I thought I'd read it. It's probably not one that we often see and read, you know. 
So I thought I'd read it. You know, we close out with this, right? So, letter of Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. It says, Now see, sorry, now shall ye see in Babylon gods of silver and of gold and of wood borne upon shoulders. <laughs> Need man carrying these keys. <laughs> so, which caused the nations to fear, right? Beware, therefore, that ye. That ye in no wise be like to strangers, the, the, the heathen, right? Neither be ye and neither be ye and of them when ye see the multitude before them and behind them worshipping them, right? Don't worship them, right? But say ye in your hearts, O Lord, we must worship thee. For my angel is with you, and I am myself caring for your souls. As for that as, as for their tongue, it is polished by the workmen, and they themselves are gilded and laid over with silver, yet they are Yet are they but force and cannot speak, right? It's the same thing that, you know, they've been dressed nice and coloured in and they've got gold and, and whatever, man, but they don't talk. They ain't alive, right? Not a living power. So, um, and, and taking gold, as it were, for, for a virgin that loved to go gay, they make crowns for the heads of their gods. Sometimes also the priests convey... Uh, from their gods, gold and silver, and bestow it upon themselves. Yea, they will give their they will give their oath to the common harlots and deck them as men with, with garments, being gods of silver, uh, gods of gold and wood. Yet cannot these gods save themselves from rust and moth, through though they be covered with purple raiment. Again, that uh, they couldn't save themselves from the flood. You know where were these gods? You know. So they wipe their face because of the dust of the temple when there is much upon them. And then, and he that cannot put to death one that offendeth him holdeth a scepter as though he were a judge of the country. He don't do shit with that scepter. <laughs> he can't judge nobody, he can't. So he, he have also in his right hand a dagger and, and an axe but cannot deliver himself from war and thieves. Whereby they are known not to be gods, therefore fear them not. For like as a vessel that a man uses is nothing worth when it is broken, even so it is with their gods. When they be set up in the temple, their eyes be full of dust, though the, through the feet of them that come in. And as the doors are made sure on every side upon them that offendeth the king, as being committed to suffer death, even so the priests make fast their temples with doors, with locks and bars, lest their god be spoiled with robbers. <laughs> You know, these gods need more protected than anybody else, man. Right? And the only, the only reason why they come after them is because they've got the gold and the silver on them, man. You know? So they light them candles, yea, more than for themselves, where, whereof they cannot see one. They are as one of the beings of the temple, yet they say their hearts are gnawed upon by the things creeping out of the earth. And when they eat them and their clothes, they feel it not. Their faces are blackened through the smoke that cometh out of the temple. Upon their bodies and heads sit bats, swallows and birds and cats also. By this ye may know that they are no gods, therefore fear them not. You know, they, they, you know, they make things make home, make that their home, man. You know, cats and birds shitting on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so notwithstanding the gold that is about them to make them beautiful, except they wipe off the rust, they will not shine. For neither when they were were molten did they feel it the things wherein there is no breath are bought for a most high price they are borne upon shoulders having no feet whereby they declare unto men that they be worth nothing worth they also that serve them are ashamed for if they fall to the ground at any time they cannot rise up again of themselves neither if one set them upright can they move of themselves neither if they they be bowed down can they make themselves straight but they set gifts before them as unto dead men as for the things that are sacrificed unto them, their priests sell and abuse in like manner. Their wives lay up part thereof in salt, but unto the poor and impotent they give nothing of it. Right? They're giving these, you know, these idols shit that, you know, they're not even gonna use. But they got poor people that need stuff, and they can do nothing with these poor people, man. Says menstruous women and women in ch in childbed eat their sacrifices. By these things ye may know that they are no gods. Fear them not. For how can they be called gods? Because women set meat before the gods of silver, gold, and wood, and the priests sit in their temples, having their clothes rent, 
and their heads and beards shaven and nothing upon their heads. They roar and cry before their gods as men do at the feast when one is dead. The priests also take off their garments and clothe their wives and children. Whether it be evil that one doeth unto them or good, they are not able to recompense it. They can neither set up a king nor put him down. In like manner, they can neither give riches nor money. Though a man make a vow unto them and keep it not, they will not require it. They can save no man from death, neither deliver the weak from the mighty. They cannot restore a blind man to his sight, nor help any man in his distress. They can show no mercy to the widow, nor do good to the fatherless. They, their gods of wood and which are overlaid with gold and silver are like the stones that be hewn out of the mountain, that they worship them and shall be confounded. How shall a man then think and say that they are gods, when even the Chaldeans themselves, themselves dishonour them? Who if they shall see one dumb they, that cannot speak? They bring him an entreat bell that he may speak as though he were able to understand. Yet they cannot understand this themselves and leave them, for they have no knowledge. The women also with cords about them sitting in the ways burn brand for perfume. But if any of them drawn by some that, that passeth by lie with him, she reproacheth her fellow that she was not thought as worthy as herself, not her cord broken. So nor her cord broken. Whatsoever is done among them is force. How may it how may it then be reported or said that they are gods? They are made of carpenters and goldsmiths. They can be hid, nothing else that the work will have, have them to be. Right? They're made in the image of the, of the carpenter. Whether the carpenter wants to, you know, design them as is what they, as how they look. Right? It says, uh, and they themselves that made them can never continue long. How should the things that are made of them be gods? For they left lies and reproaches to them that come after. For when they come with any war or plague upon them, the priests consult with themselves where they may be hidden with them. How then cannot men perceive that they be not no gods? Right? They ain't consulting the, 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 um, the statues and the, the idols. They're consulting themselves, right? So which can neither save themselves from war nor from plague. For seeing they be of wood and overlay with silver and gold, it shall be known hereafter that they are false. And it shall manifestly appear to all nations and kings that they are no gods. And this is what the Lord is going to openly come and do, man. For all this time, you know, these are, these are nations have believed in all these, these idols in the world, right? And this judgment, this, you know, the day of the Lord when it comes is going to put all of that stuff to bed, right? It's going to be, the Lord is going to make himself known in the earth, right? And everyone's going to understand that there is only one power. The Lord Yahweh is the creator of all things, man. He is the only God. Right? From the beginning, right? And that these idols are nothing but that. Wood and stone. Right? Figments of people's imaginations. Right? That have no power. Alright? So it's gonna be very it can be made uh, very evident in that day. And this is what the Lord's gonna do with this uh this with this great judgment. Okay, and you're also going to have Yahweh Shai and the sons of God ruling upon the earth, man. As, as testimonies and reminders of, of that power. Alright? So it ain't going to be mistaken again. These people are not going to have idols. They're all going to be destroyed and, and burnt down and broken down. Okay, idols ain't going to be a thing uh, in the kingdom. Everyone's going to know and understand where the true power lays, you know. So then it, says, it shall manifestly appear to all nations and kings that they are no gods, but the works of men's hands, and that there is no work of God in them. Who then may not know that they are no gods? For neither can they set up a king in the land, nor give, the, give reign unto men. Neither can they judge their own cause, nor redress a wrong, being unable, for they are as crows between heaven and earth. Whereupon, when fire falleth upon the house of, of gods of wood, or laid over with gold and silver, their priests will flee away and escape, but they themselves shall be burned asunder like beams. Moreover, they cannot withstand any king or enemies. How can it be then thought or said that they be, they be gods? Neither are those gods of wood and laid over with silver or gold able to escape either from thieves or robbers. Okay, all these things are, are, great, are greater than these idols that you created, man.
they're all stronger. Whose gold and silver and garments where they are clothed, that they are strong, take and go with all. Neither are they able to help themselves. Therefore it is better to be a king that sheareth his power, or else a profitable vessel in a house which the owner shall have use of, than such false gods, or to be a door in a house to keep such things therein, than false gods, than such false gods, or a pillar of wood in a palace, than such false gods. Because at least they do a, they serve a purpose. <laughs> you know, they actually do something. It says, uh, For sun, moon, and stars being bright and sent to do their offices are obedient. In like manner, the lightning, when it breaketh forth, is easy to be seen, and after the same manner, the wind bloweth in every country. And when God commands the clouds to go over the whole world, they do as they are bidden. And the fire sent from above to consume hills and woods do as it is commanded. But these are like unto them neither in shoe nor power. Wherefore it is neither to be supposed nor said that they, be go that they are gods, seeing they are able neither to judge causes nor to do good unto men. Knowing therefore that they are no gods, fear them not. For they can neither curse nor bless kings. Neither can they shew signs in the heavens among the heathen, nor shine as the sun, nor give light as the moon. The beasts are better than they, for they can get under a cover and help themselves. It is then by no means manifest unto us that they are gods, therefore fear them not. For as a scarecrow in a garden of cucumbers keepeth nothing, so are their gods of wood and, and laid over with silver and gold. And likewise their gods of wood and laid over with silver and gold are like to a white fawn, in an orchard that every bird sitteth upon, as also to a dead body that is east in the dark. And ye shall know them to be no gods by the purple, bright purple that roteth upon them, and they themselves afterwards shall be eaten, and shall be a reproach in the country. Better therefore it is, is the just man that have none idols, for he shall be far from reproach. Right, could that be seen as you know, good as from the Heavenly Father? Because it's the most I that do if anything to anybody. All right, but you know these these guys now, what, what's going on? <laughs> you know, and that goes to all these gods, man. All these these so-called gods that are supposed to be out there in the world, man. All these different religions, okay? It's all idol worship, man. Okay, they ain't doing shit. You know, you got niggas in the in the into Egyptology, man. Where 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 are your gods, man? Where's 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 the god you believe in? Now we know we're dealing with the living power, man, because the the words of his prophecy that we have, and the fact that everything's coming to pass. That's how we know our power is real. Okay, we ain't got a question, man, but we're questioning your gods, man. What, what what's going on? <laughs> what's going on, man? Getting carried out of, out of the water and shit. <laughs> anyway, man, you know, Lord, Lord really, this is edifying, and um, I'll catch you, brother and sister, in the next video, man. So, till next time, say shalom.